Uh, sure. I, I can start. Like, I think we should go through advice process before posting it in, into the DAO and yeah, gather some information on, on the on the people who uh, yeah, like, I mean, now we also implemented the price Macedon, so uh, yeah, just go through advice process and then make the decision to the DAO and then let's say the stakeholders what they think and yeah, that, that that's the first thing that comes to my head. But I'd like to hear from Nate. Uh, can you repeat the question again? Sorry. Yeah, like now we, we have to make some decisions like Griff posted on the Stuart channels like three of them at least. One of them being like the giving uh, tokens with governance powers to the the contributors who are getting paid during the previous to the hatch. And yeah, that's a decision we have to make as a DAO now. And and actually like to make this decision a uh, thing, it have to have like a lot of quorum because it's very easy to block, actually. So. What do you think it would be like the best way to approach uh, bigger and important decisions like this one? Like, you know, we had previous agreements uh, for that and yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. Um, I think that, you know, uh, really creating traditions around voting is really, really, really important, especially early on, uh, just kind of to, to establish behaviors around, you know, why we vote, what we vote on and, and the processes and involved. Involved. And so I think that if we can create a really, you know, positive culture around voting and, and have really high turnouts, because that's what you're going to need for, especially within the hatch style, the, the parameters that we establish in the hatch style make it very difficult to pass any type of proposal. Um, so I think that in traditions and mainly is, you know, that, that involves communicating with, with everybody and making sure that everybody is well informed about these debates and, and kind of creating some type of structure around like the pros and cons side of yes and no, why we're proposing it and making sure that every single person is well informed and invested in, in the decisions that are being made within the hatch style. Uh, I think that, you know, every single proposal has to have a significant justification for being created in the first place. Uh, and, and within the hatch that we have the high toll gate fee. So, I mean, it's a, a significant cost to, to make these proposals. And so I think creating just consistent traditions around like, you know, Hey, let's have an evaluation party or like, you know, like, like make it fun, make it interactive, kind of gamify the voting process in a lot of ways to, to just get people interested and involved because otherwise, you know, we're just going to. You know, especially within the hatch DAO, I assume that the comments upgrade parameters will be a little bit less strict, but I think that in the hatch DAO, things are very, very strict and we need to have some type of, uh, you know, uh, uh, method for, for getting people interested. So uh, that's what I would say. Uh, and I will pass it to Anna Marie. Thank you. It's a really great question and um, fascinating answers. So, um, Say for me, different types of voting is the thing that I feel l least confident about being sort of quite new in the DAO space. That's the kind of aspect of governance, like all the different voting tools is something that I feel probably I don't have a huge amount of information on. Um, I agree with what everyone said so far. I think the advice process is incredibly useful especially if and I think I remember someone was writing up or kind of looking at how we do the advice process because I think it's really useful it's key to know with the advice process what the different steps are um like do we yeah if we're seeking advice do we do that publicly is that done privately um do we reach out to specific individuals or do we just kind of have a vague, I'm asking for advice? So like some information about that's really key. I think I would really appreciate knowing, are we going to potentially use voting tools? And I know there is one where you can um, refer your voting power to someone else that you believe has like greater um, knowledge of a particular area 
So like if there are certain aspects of the hatch that I feel like, oh yeah, I've really understood this, I feel comfortable voting, it would be great to have the opposite in the areas that perhaps I can't get my head around and that I could give that to someone else. And something I've also been wondering, and this might not be appropriate here, but um, is a lot around, so the, the, the small amount of voting that I've experienced in the TC you could see which um, options were getting the most votes and how the votes were going. And I think that there's some inherent challenges with that because it, it, it's, it's often easier to vote for those that you see are getting a lot of voting power already. So I wondered if there's some way we could explore hiding that ability to see what's gaining votes already so that you're literally just voting for something because you think it's a good option or not. Those are my uh, thoughts and I will pass to, is it, it's Michael, is it? Yes, Michael. Um, Michael. Yeah, so um, yeah, uh, from my perspective as someone who is like, I'm, I'm working on a voting module to to the, to this trying to make more deliberative decisions um, and it's working based on an argument tree like Nate said, pro and con arguments. I think long-term decision-making in, in DAOs would profit from having a clear overview um, which aspects are weighted by whom, how much. So I would like see DAOs making decisions in such an argument tree and yeah I would feel like this brings a lot of transparency and accountability in hindsight to to the decision making process so I am um, yeah very much into the idea to to create such a tool and um, use it to to make more deliberative decisions um, Um, yeah, I would give it to um, maybe Mount Manu. Is he there still? No. Then Nobs Dao, I would say. Oh, I, I, I had no idea what you guys ask. And I having lunch. Go just skip me for a few and just put me in contact. <laughs> Leave me, please. Yeah, so Zeptim has asked how should we take decisions for some of the decisions missing before the commons upgrade? Oh, that's powerful, but yeah, give me give me a chance. <laughs> okay. I'll pass to Griff. Sorry, I had trouble finding the mute button. But uh, I honestly, I feel like we should play with our the toy that has all the money in it and use the use dandelion voting. Eighty eight percent support required and eight percent quorum uh, were you know voted on the community for ratification. I think it, all the other. I think we should probably like. I think that the decision making process can have many different you know, in like um, like. Uh, steps like uh, yeah snapshot DAO or you know token log and all these things but in the end anything should be ratified by the DAO um, because that's like the where all the stakeholders have the voting power and it's it's kind of like the most legitimate voting structure we have so uh, that's where I think most of the decisions should come from but advice process and uh, and like the the system, like determining it, like even the Commons dashboard, you know, um, that that's like to me that's like an advice process. And this token log and all these things, those are all just kind of part of legitimizing the decision. And then ratification should happen through the DAO. Uh, and I'll pass it but, to. Uh, Green, one question. Yeah? But what about like Nate was mentioning, like the toll gate fee? Who should pay for that target fee when that's a decision we should do as a community? That's true. I mean, uh, yeah, it's it's a that's a, that's a really good point. It is a little bit of a heavy fee, but 
but uh, if the decision isn't worth a thousand dollars, then maybe the maybe the collective shouldn't. I don't know. That's a really good question. Uh, I mean, what when I'm th- thinking of the seventy-five percent uh, governance rights, for instance, that one. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I guess that's such a good point. We could probably have. I guess we could avoid it with snapshot. Um, and start playing with that. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're right, Sep. We should probably save the $1,000 uh, and just use a snapshot or something. Oh, uh, yeah. So now, change my mind. Snapshot. We should use snapshot with 88% uh, support required and 8% quorum for every decision and just model after the DAO. And I'll pass it to Wonka. Thanks, Griff. Um, actually, um, I think yesterday in, in, in the night, I shared um, an article. I think I am going to post it today uh, to in SoftGov that uh, talks about um, moving be- beyond uh, coin voting governance. And yeah, I think it makes really good um, reflections on the tools that we have right now and that they are very powerful, but um, we shouldn't like just rely blindly on them and remember always that uh, voting processes are social processes and that the tools that we have um, reflect um, um, also the work that we do around these social processes and uh, yeah, that, I, that's why I think it's so important um, what we have been talking about advice process and like communication and transparency because like um, the the voting tool should be like to express and to ratify and to have accountability on the decision that was taken but I don't think that voting or relying on voting um, should be like um, the way that that we try to 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 um to take decisions in a in a very complex issue it's not just like hey um there's the, this issue and and let's do a voting around it but it's also very important the the previous work that we have and um i think that we are a very um um value driven community and that we are very aligned one, one to each other so so i think that we should um also um, rely a lot on 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 um, decisions that can be taken uh, off chain or processes that can be um, like shared off chain and that maybe what re- stays on chain is just like yeah the the uh, like the registry of 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 the act and 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 somehow like yeah the the um, the consolidation of of a process that that um, starts uh, before the the voting so so yeah it's just not like um relying too much on voting because all, all like the the tools that we have um have its own flaws and like uh and trying to 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 have um these decision spaces um very very promoted off chain and um i will pass to durgas Or I'm eating right now. Can someone else go? Uh, hey, David, do you want to go next? Or Katie? Oh, maybe you're doing okay. and learn about soft gov, and uh, I will, will say that I do agree. Uh, the eighty is eighty eight percent for uh, majority. It sounds like a great idea, uh, keeping the community cohesive, 
And the only thing I wanted to add is because some of the tools are untested, like Celeste, it hasn't been used really operationally yet over at OneHive. Um, we will want to include a backup uh, plan as in if, if Celeste fizzles. Um, at least we can default to to something that's known in advance and not be left uh, caught with our pants down, so to speak. Um, I don't even know if that answered the question remotely, but with that, I will pass it on to um, uh, Juan. Have you gone? Yeah, I think uh, Katie, Katie and Ben are missing. Go for it, Katie. Me? Did you say me? Yeah, go for it, Katie. <laughs> hey, howdy. Um, right. So I, I'm. I missed a couple of the the responses, but I liked. I was thinking that where it all started when Nate was talking about voting and Anna Marie was talking about. Uh, more, um, I don't know, like, uh, I don't know, this sounds like such a big question to me, I don't even know how to answer it. I like all those ideas, I, I, I would love it if we could have, we talked about this a bunch where we were trying to figure out what kind of proposals don't need large um, processes and which do, I don't know if that's relevant in this context. But I fully appreciate the, the voting approach, but also Anna Marie's comments on being more knowledgeable about the processes and how we can best implement them. So I don't really have anything fabulous to contribute, but I'm, I'm trying to um, do a lot of uh, research and, and listening right now since I've had some um, situations where I haven't been able to participate as much as usual. So I'm going to pass it. What, who'd you say, Livy? Dan, if you're ready now. I'm so Please. not ready, but I can go. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know, guys. I, I mean, like, uh, you're, make, you're making me think about, I mean, great ideas, super interesting topic. Uh, you're making me think a lot about how do we ensure this participation? Because, you know, like uh, we got to 210 hatchers and on top of that, you know, some builders that, that weren't that didn't contribute, but that's that's OK. And just looking at the contract and the DAO, the numbers are different because block scout is messy. Anyhow, I'm just thinking about participation weights of ensuring participation in there are so many different ways. But if we need to do the kind of effort that was the hatcher outreach kind of effort that we just went through, it's a massive effort you know like uh uh pc comms needs to scale asap that's that's basically something that comes to mind like every time i mean thinking about uh everything that had to be done from the trusted seed side just to get people on board and everything that we couldn't do because we were you know like it was a, it was we could have done more of course but it was a lot of things so how do we ensure participation um because this is not the kind of voting where you get a message, an SMEs message from your candidate, like, hey, vote for me, you know. So that's that's something that's really heavily uh, on top of my mind. Um, I'm thinking a lot about, I think it was Anna Marie that mentioned delegation. That's interesting. And uh, yeah, and different tools that like Snapchat. And I'm interested in those two streams. Uh, so back to you, Libby. Cool. Um, yeah, that was a great Hi. set. Well, you're ready, Turgidas? Can somebody reiterate the question to me again because I missed it. I do have something um, I can add to that late, latest. Uh, we... Yeah. yeah. Uh, how... So in it, HubSpot, it was... if you connect HubSpot with a, a texting service, um, <clears throat> you can set up you know, automated things to allow people to get SMSs around. Um, so if we're talking about Hatcher outreach and things, maybe, you know, um, some of this uh, sort of massive in-person outreach thing could be done simply by um, uh, doing a text email, bl a text uh, blast or an email blast or just notifications like when there are important things that, you know, are going on, we can send out 
either an email or text um, in terms of, um, you know, set up some kind of automation that would say uh, for a given project, we would hook something up in HubSpot to uh, create notifications, you know, uh, give, uh, in, in a given set of um, uh, periods of time. So you could have a countdown. So you could say, okay, a month ago, two weeks ago, a week ago, three days ago, whatever. So w whatever it is that, you know, we decide in terms of comms that might actually help to alleviate this uh, continuous sort of outreach uh, issue. Obviously, you're going to have to tune it to make it um, so that it's not like super annoying, but uh, at the same time, you know, still informs people. So that might be a way to <clears throat> uh, convey information that, uh, you know, people need to know about urgent things and um, not have to have all of us um, directly involved. Awesome. Thank you. Hey, Craig, welcome. Uh, do you want to take a crack at this question before we move on? On how should we take decisions for some of the decisions missing before the comments upgrade? I can't hear you. Mm. Can can I ask something? Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I I haven't participated in any vote or proposal yet. So I'm I'm yeah not qualified to to give some yeah opinion. But I'm I'm interested how people can inform themselves about the different aspects of a decision at the moment. So what's the like? They should be well informed to to make good decisions in the end. So how is this this um, which is the best way to to get the information? Is there some place where everything is collected, or do people have to read through the forum, or, or how is it basically? Yes, we've been using m multiple ways, but mostly relying on the forum and on um, Twitter or on the blog posts or on Discord. So we try to like reach out to people, tag people, uh, pass information around. So advice process usually works by identifying who are the people that are gonna be impacted by a certain decision or who are the people who might have expertise to give inputs to that decision and then reaching out to them. And then when there is a voting session, uh, we've been using token log for the past decisions we we've made and and then that was like widely promoted in all our mediums but uh, now we have another tool that is the DAO and and we have some decisions to make so I'm gonna... hey Batlan nice to see you here. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Um, so yeah, I can jump into one of our topics. That is, hey, can you mute yourself, that one, please? Um. Hey, she's come back to our room. Hello. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Um, okay, so so I started here uh, some to lay out some of these proposals. So we have <clears throat> so Griff made a post uh, in the stewards chat with some of the decisions that we had to make still uh, before the commons upgrade. And then one of them is the 75% uh, governance give back that is part of the no abnormal intervention. So I used a little bit like the guideline that we have for proposing in the forum, uh, but just um, with a few last questions. And I think that needs to be updated and that's another topic of this call. But then also, uh, yeah, just giving a description, explaining what is the problem, what is the proposed solution, what are some of the details, 
um, what is the delivery date, how this will benefit the community, and who is involved in this proposal. So this is something that going through our, our back past proposals from that spreadsheet that I was sharing in the last call, um, I saw that we used to do this uh, more in the beginning of like every proposal, like really putting them into a template and um, explaining everything that is happening and then people can comment in a doc and this might be a good part of the advice process or uh, just posting in the forum so people can comment on it. Uh, so yeah, I think this is a good practice to bring back and we can use this format for even for advice process proposals. And then after we have gathered some inputs, we can put it into Snapshot, for example. Uh, that is a tool we didn't try yet, but it might go well now that even Nate and Mateo are working on Boardroom and maybe we'll start having some integrations with Snapshot. So this could be a good idea for using that with these proposals. And then the other one is burn and remain TDCH tokens for people who lost their keys or want to switch their addresses. And there is a little description here. You guys can jump into this document too. Uh, it's not finished. There's a lot to uh, put down still. But if you have inputs for any of these proposals and want to add it here, uh, feel free to do that. And then the other can I one. Something, Libby? Yeah. Is is a snapshot? Is it based off the TEC token or the TECH token? Because that might be an issue. We can choose which tokens to use, but then I think it would make sense to use TECH tokens for this one. Okay. And yeah, so we have uh, those few proposals. Um, one of them is TC makes the initial buy into the bonding curve with its own treasury and a little justification here. Uh, and then finally, the community covenant uh, that we're working on in legal and, and in softgov. And I'll plug that um, this in here. So, so anyone can also look into that and yeah i think it feels like there's some type of um alignment on using snapshot mostly because of the toll gate fee but if anyone has other alternatives other than the ones that we already laid out in the beginning of the call also, uh, feel free to make suggestions and maybe we have a few days. I would like to at least have these proposals kind of drafted by the end of this week. And back to your uh, comment, Nate, of having some like rituals of uh, submitting proposals and voting on proposals. I think we need to investigate um, a better ritual because the one we used before there was, oh, we would propose until Friday and then votings would happen in the weekend. And on Monday we would have a decision uh, that was not so, you. I think that depends a lot on each tool. So, so maybe we need a certain ritual for when we're using each tool. Maybe it will fall more under uh, like having a single tool for soft governance and having a single tool for like um, financial rewards that is conviction voting. So we can think um, about them too. Does anyone has comments so far on, on these proposals or on how we're moving forward? And if this seems like a good a good step to post all of these proposals and advice process and then uh, have them submitted to Snapshot. Okay, 
And hello, XAV, too, if you want to just say hi, welcome. This is a softgov call, and we're going through uh, some of our decision making that is missing before the commons upgrade. So for you and Batuan that are uh, in this call for the first time, we are in this transition from the uh, from the hatched out to the commons upgrade. So we finalized our fundraising uh, period, and now okay, he's left. <laughs> now we're moving to. Um, uh, uh, we're moving to implementing the augmented bonding curve and the conviction voting into the commons. So if this feels more or less aligned, the next topic was uh, the guidelines for proposal making that Eduardo raised, and I know he was working on something for that, but he's not in the call today. So I think we have some notes to add here and some of them came from last call but we didn't have time to go into it so uh, may maybe we need a little more guidelines for proposals and to update the the proposal template so i guess eduardo is on it but if someone wants to collaborate with him i think you can reach out to him too And then, Zactimus, do you want to talk about advice process since we are in this topic now? Okay, yeah, like, uh, yeah, um, I, I, we decided on the on conference to revise the advice process uh, and we're using like the credentials management that was like the last decision we made and yeah, we decided to uh, check it out and see how can we get more engagement on the advice process. Like for now, we uh, are announcing it them, like the advice process uh, the topics we are announcing them on the on the community call. Uh, then uh, we are also uh, uh, right now. I'm waiting for a response uh, on Tam and Chui. Like they are kind of on vacation, so it might take a bit. Um, for the yeah, I, I just send them like the whole uh, documentation and like my concerns and yeah, I just ask them for advice uh and also we are going to like, like when we have like all this advice also working on the on the templates like there are some parts like are confusing like the uh, we were on a call with Libby and so, some part of the dandelion voting and you know like on the advice process was a bit confusing and yeah just redoing those templates but first we want to get also the the feedback and if anyone in here have any suggestion on, on how to make it, uh, how to improve the advice process, please reach out. And yeah, we're working on it. Yeah, that's that's okay. Did you have any insights on like now reaching out to people, thinking on it from a more like detailed perspective? Was it was it hard to communicate with people? Is there something that like you, yeah, is there any insight from this last week that you were asking for that proposal? Yeah, I mean, since two of the three pe persons I reached out uh, are kind of on vacation, it was a bit tough. Normally, I think it's going to be easier. Like, like for example, Grief answered me in like 10 minutes and he gave me like the full details of what he's thinking. Uh, but for Chui and Tam, they, Tam asked me like if it was a hurry and I told her like, of course not, like take your time and you know, I, also I prefer like she takes his time and do it more uh, concise. Like since it's something we want to improve, it's not like something we need to do just now. It's, it's better just to have, uh, yeah, let's her his time and uh, when she's ready, he, she just go for it. And yeah, and I, and same for Chui, like he's, He's on vacation. I, I, he's, he told me like he's going to answer on the forum post, which is even better. Like he's going to make like it's going to be more transparent because he's going to answer on the on the forum post. And yeah, I, I don't know. Like if, if as I said before, like if someone have some insights on on how to improve it even more, like uh, I appreciate it. And yeah, I'm working on it. 
And this is something you brought up, uh, Anne-Marie, if uh, advice process is reaching out to people in or if that is transparent or if it's put public somewhere. Maybe this is something we need to, um, I don't know, maybe it's a practice we can develop that even when it's um, asked for in private that we can add the information to the forum and maybe tell the people who we are asking. Because sometimes it's easier to reach out to people directly and in a private chat, but then asking the permission to put that info in the forum. Uh, I mean, I think it would be incredibly helpful to have all that shared so that um, everyone can see the responses that are coming back when that advice is being sought. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah, or could we even have a, it, I don't know if we kind of have T, we don't really have TC agreements that we kind of agree to to become. I, I, if there was a culture where if you're being asked for advice, you're aware that that's going to be shared, I, I think that could be really useful. And I think if it's possible to also state in the um, the post who you're seeking advice from so even if you're not looking to to so that whoever goes on the post can immediately see oh they're reaching out to these particular people to seek advice yeah that's a great idea to add this practice to our agreement so people have um, maybe we can we need to revisit those agreements and make them a little more clear and concise and transparency is a practice, but something like this could be added more specifically. That's great. And then, I mean, like that would be such a natural thing to have as part of the onboarding um, process is to take people through the agreements. Would anyone want to, would you be interested or anyone want to uh, look into these agreements and see what are the things that we need to improve. Uh, I'd jump on that if if there's anyone else that'd like to do that with me. Very welcome to like reach out after the call here if you don't, um, if you're not certain right now if you can do it, but just DM me and let me know. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, this is this is something big that definitely needs to happen. They are in the Git book. Let me put the link here. They're a little bit raw right now, but here. Okay. Does anyone um, does anyone wants to bring something about this topic still, or can we move on? Cool. Yeah. So <clears throat> yeah, mm -hmm. there's also a document like it's need. I mean, not need, but it's going to be good to have. Like it's best practices. Uh, for advice process, like I don't know if someone wants also to join this, and yeah, if someone's interested, also reach out. I, I do have a question about that um, particular thing. So, best practice usually happens when when we're dealing with something that's really uh, clear and well understood and only needs to be categorized. Hello? Yeah, you're back. Oh, weird. 
yeah, my whole Discord just crashed and <laughs> rebooted itself. <laughs> so sorry. Uh, no, I was just thinking, like, if you think in Kinefin terms, um, best practices when every absolutely everything is known about that thing. <clears throat> so when we're we're saying it uh, about this thing, is that is that true? Uh, if not, we might need to, you know, if we're in the realm of the complicated, we might want to think about things in terms of you know good practice until we can know everything about it. Yeah, I, I, and I think that we need to have a little bit more clarity around like um, uh, subject matter experts. Um, I think each working group, especially if you're making decisions within a working group, you should be seeking out subject matter experts that can participate in, in, in your group. Um, you know, if, if you're somebody like we, we really need to start having a list of SMEs to, to really um, – to help us with this advice process. A lot of times we go, you know, I'm looking to go through advice process. I have no, no idea where to go, who to go to, uh, because we don't really have a well-established SME program. And I think that if we did, I think that it would be much easier to uh, connect with these individuals. Um, and onboarding as many as possible is great because then you can have kind of like this is a reboard uh, of a, a particular niche uh, field or, um, you know, practice, whether it be, you know, accountants <laughs> or like people who are good at comms, like, a, like people who are really, you know, they have so much experience. And so, and I consider Dirk and us, I consider you a, an SME for comms. I think you have so much experience in terms of HubSpot and stuff like that. And so if I have questions of that, I know exactly who to go to for that particular issue. And so creating profiles on our SMEs, making sure that each working group knows who the SMEs are within that particular field and who to go to for that. And then on top of that, having transparency about the interaction between the, uh, SMEs and the decision makers within the working groups is really important. Just to say, hey, this is what was advised. This is the decision I decided to make. And these are the justifications for why. Uh, I think. If, if we can establish that around the advice process, I think we'll be in good shape. Well, and just narratively understanding what you're doing when you're, when you're taking an advice process, just, you know, so going back to this uh, idea of Kinefin, you know, I think I might've shown you guys this uh, in the past, but part of the, um, if you'd like, I can go over it again. Um, but when you get when you're asking an expert for something, it's because uh, best practice doesn't exist, and what you're looking for is somebody who can give you you know good practice so that eventually you guys can settle on a best practice, right? And so, uh, whereas if you go over into the complex, then you're <clears throat> you're just experimenting, right? So, and then it's you know, experts that emerge from that experimentation, right? So, yeah, that's my I only let. If you guys think about that in terms of high level, just understand what you're doing there. Really, that's, I think, especially, yeah, that's really spot on, Degadis. And I think what Nate's pointed to is incredibly important, having that clarity of knowing who is the, this, not that we approve of, but that we know are approachable, I think, is really important. That's made me realize that I don't know if we have the assumption that um, a subject matter expert is someone that's always within the TEC or whether that's quite a broad approach, like we know someone in another DAO or in another community or just have access to someone that um, has this incredible expertise in their area. So that might be something to add to the best practices. To understand that would be really good. Yeah, that's a great point. Do you need any help, uh, Nate, to move forward with that, with clarifying the role of such subject matter experts and how to reach out to them and all of the questions that were brought up? Yeah, it's 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 a it's kind of a rather difficult approach because really, you know, I, I we can we can try to create uh, a, like a centralized approach towards uh, composing like an SME list. But really it's, it's, it's about the relationships that they have. Like we can get as many SMEs to say, yes, we'll, we'll, we'll help out with this. 
but if they're not approachable, like like uh, Anna Marie said, it, it's kind of worthless. <clears throat> so it really, it's about relationships between the working group and that subject matter expert. And so yeah, I think the I think the the what we need to have is is the working group stewards in particular to re- really reach out or like create a list of people who they think would be interested and start building relationships with those individuals um because because they they need to be autonomous and they need to be able to create the relationships directly with the subject matter experts and not just some kind of random list that every once in a while we just bug the answer us um i think you know incorporating them into the tec process overall is really really important if we want this type of structure to work so um yeah, I, I think uh, each working group lead needs to to really focus on on trying to reach out to subject matter experts within their field, uh, whether it be like you know Twitter, HubSpot, or like you know governance, uh, <laughs> you know tokenomics, like whatever whatever it may be. Like it, it, we need to have those people um, having relationships within it, and then having them public for for the working group members contributors to actually engage with. Can I maybe suggest we have a hack session about creating uh, like a flow of what the device process looks like? Um, and then I can maybe make a graphic about it because I already have something in my head uh, that I could do. Yeah, uh, that would be awesome, Durgadas. Like, uh, I'll DM you just now and we schedule a, a meeting for that. Sounds good. Awesome. That's great. Oh, that's awesome. So many things popped up here. So, Nate, I think that's a really good idea, and we can bring that to the stewards meeting tomorrow to maybe start drafting that out, or people can, uh, stewards can have ideas of who are subject matter experts of each group, and I think that, like, expands the awareness a little bit, too, of how we are, like, seeing a working group and, um, it might influence on the structure for it. That was something I was working on with them too. So just as a last topic, um, since Eduardo is not here, I'll leave this one to um, chat more with him since he has work on it that, that is not here. And and then there was something I was thinking around peer reviews. It was also something Edu said uh, in the last call when we were talking about challenges and pleasures of being in a self-governing community. And one of the challenges he mentioned was a uh, lack of peer review and how difficult it is to know um, if your contributions are being, um, how, how, are peop- how are the relationships uh, happening of course, we have praise that gives a lot of insight into that, but mostly into the qualities of everyone. And is it needed that we have a space for constructive criticism or for us to be able to chat with each other? And maybe this would uh, create like a healthier environment for gravity even. I read this uh, paper yesterday that's... Um, that's called um, consent and political legitimacy and it's really interesting how um, it compares uh, some some models of um, of consent that we have now and consensus uh, decision making and of like the legitimacy of the regimes and and then it introduces this concept of quality consent that is not only consent that we need, but we need some type of metric to know that that consent has quality. And then she expands on like what those metrics would be. But uh, yeah, and I recommend that you guys check it out. But one thing uh, that I thought it could be interesting for us and that relates to that comment of the peer review is that maybe um, we could achieve quality consent through uh, peer review because one of the things of uh, quality consent is seeing the individual as someone that has like a whole universe belonging to them and not someone that is general to um, 
just being a part of the collective. So it's this both instances working together. And I thought that us being in such a collective and and all the time making a lot of decisions and collective and making and collaborating in so many things if we could benefit from having something like that so i i didn't do this yet but i was thinking to uh, repurpose something we have in the common stack that is just a, a simple outline for how to uh, have peer reviews and that maybe we could have something like this in in the tc and just wanting to hear thoughts from everyone so yeah, this was all the agenda we had today. And I just wanted to give space for one last sharing. We can pass around and maybe everyone has 30 seconds to share. Please be mindful of the time. And then we can finish in, in six minutes. And I'll pass to uh, I'll pass to Juan to start. Thank you, Libby. Well, um... I want to invite everyone uh, to the next call that we will have um, right after this call, uh, that we will be uh, having a sense making around uh, um, the second Graviton training proposal. And the idea is to share, um, yeah, we have a, a, a starting proposal and the idea is to share some, some feedback and to do some advice process on, on the topics, on the curation that we're having. And, um, yeah, uh, af after this, and maybe if it's neither another meeting, we will be posting the, the second Graviton training study plan uh, in a forum post so that everyone is aware of, of um, the topics that we will be covering. And yeah, it's in five minutes. And um, I will pass to um, Anna Marie. I'm sorry, I'd popped off to grab a drink. Can you remind me of what we're... Okay. Just a closing round. Um, yeah, what's a closing closing round? Um, I don't know what to say. I'm thrown. It was a really, it was interesting. I'm looking forward <laughs> to the Graviton thing. I don't know what else to say. Um, uh, and also, if you guys have thoughts on the peer review uh, process and starting this in the community. Um, yes, I think I, I, I don't have, that's not something I have any experience of, but I can see usefulness of it. And I would be very curious to see, um, kind of the ideas that get shared about how that would work. Um, and with that, I will share it to Craig. Hey, Craig, are you there? Oh, oh, there you are. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, sorry, I've been in and out and listening and all very interesting, but I'm not equipped to make any useful comments. But I hope to catch up on all the forum discussion uh, later on today, and I'll pass it to uh, Durgadas. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Look forward to seeing you all in gravity, and I will pass it to Griff. Yeah, I'm so excited. SoftGov's got a lot going on now. You know, I think peer reviews and, and mutual monitoring is super cool and definitely something we need some sort of process for it. And uh, also, like, we have a DAO. We got a DAO with $1.5 million in it. And there's some cool votes coming up. So I think uh, this, like, you know, this next month while we're, we're going to, it's going to be at least a, probably a, around a month, maybe even more, sadly, before the Commons dashboard is ready to be, uh, you know, used. So to design the Commons upgrade. So this next month, you know, it's, uh, we got our work cut out for us, like getting some, getting a, a good advice process going on some of these votes and a decision making process to get the DAO uh, to decide these other little things. So that's super cool, and I'm I'm excited to see how it goes because uh, everything just got real. So that's that's super fun, uh, and I'll pass it to Nate.
Yeah, um, I'm just yeah really excited about all these uh, different changes. We got a lot of moving parts right now, which is really exciting. Um, I think that there's a lot of conversations to be had and uh, a lot of work to be done within that month. And so I think that you know as long as we are you know chugging forward, I think we're being in good shape. But outside of that, I don't have much to comment on. Um, so I will uh, I'll actually pass it to Cyber Rabbit. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I just joined today. Uh, Livia and I, we met each other at the, the different DAO. Uh, and it's been really great to come back to DAO space today. I have, I've been away for two years. So it's good to connect with you all and, uh, and hope, to, hope to see you and hear your thoughts in the upcoming meetings. So I will pass it to uh, David. Please, D-Y-O-R. Hello. Thanks, and um, I actually missed the opening question. What what was the question uh, that I'm being passed to answer? Just the closing round. A closing round. Well, uh, yeah. you know, I was just kind of overwhelmed with the opening of the hatch, and I guess the closing of the hatch more accurately, and uh, so stoked to see what's coming next. Um, yeah, it's pretty exciting, and uh, thanks for letting me be a part of it, and thanks for everyone else who's choosing to be a part of it. It's uh, it's a great adventure. Thanks. Michael, do you want to take it next? Oh, yeah. sorry, we we're going to pass. All good. You take it. Yeah, um, so I'm I'm pretty new here, trying to understand how everything's working. But yeah, I'm very glad to be here. It fits great. And yeah, I would like or love to contribute to something. Also, thinking about joining the boardroom hackathon. So yeah, really great experience so far. I'll pass it to Zeptimus. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I think, yeah, this is going very good. I really love, I'm going to work with Turgadas on the advice process. It's very nice to have, you know, like uh, someone to working together in a work session and have, you know, different brainstorm and yeah, it's going to be fun. And yeah, I think things are moving forward uh, very nice. I mean, maybe the, uh, maybe I feel we need to hurry up a bit more on the dashboard. I know like, I mean, it takes the time to take. It's not like we can just make it happen. But I wish like the hype uh, keeps constant and don't go down. But yeah, uh, I'll pass it to, I don't know who's then gone. Uh, Juan? Aloysius? I can go. Yeah. Um, whew, holy cow, this is such an incredible time, y'all. I haven't been like visible in this community much, like in screens and where people can see me, but um, it's blowing my mind the uh, the mentality, the energy of looking at life like just what's coming through for me is looking at life like science and being curious and iterating quickly um, is always been what I believe change needs and being in this space is incredible. Um, what I heard when we were going around and uh, talking about what you guys were working on just then, uh, it reminded me of being in the military, how we had delegations of authority. People were supposed to be assigned as subject matter experts so that there were people to go to. Um, and it was all about responsibility. Um, even though I believe that a lot of what I did there was uh, was cultish. Um, I think that there was a lot of, of, of uh, good structure built upon poor morals. And uh, yeah, being in this space is pretty much incredible. Um, mentorship is huge. And I love that that's happening here. I don't know if there was anyone else to pass to, but I've got another community call to go to. Thank you. Yeah, we, we got our time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Aloysius and uh, Batuan for joining for the first time. It was great to have you here. And thank you all.